Hello everyone, I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about the Dublin Literary Award. The winner has been announced on the 20th of this month, so really soon. Um, it's a few days from when I'm filming this, but I'm not sure when will you see it. Um, maybe like very close to the, the price. But because I have read all of the books in the list, I thought I will go through them and tell you a bit more about my thoughts. It's kind of a prediction of the winner, but not really because I never know how to predict a winner. Like, I don't know how the judges are gonna think about these books. Um, but yeah, I, I will chat around those books and see a little bit of what I think um, should win or should not win. Um, so there are six books in the, in the Dublin Literary Awards shortlist. And uh, I'm just going to roughly talk about them in the order of I liked it not so much to I really really like it and I think has a good chance to to win uh, but again as I said I have no idea about what the judges think so just disclaimer <laughs> about that um, but yeah the first one I wanted to talk about is Lost Children Archive by Val Valeria Luiselli um, and as you can see this is quite an older book because the Dublin Literary Award um, is about backlisted books and they also have translated and non-translated books. So I forgot to say that, but now you know. Uh, but yeah, Lost Children Archive is about this mixed family. So there is a, a woman and a man that got together and they both had children from previous relationships and they kind of have this, this family of children that are theirs but not theirs kind of thing. Um, and she, they have uh, jobs that until then they have um, matched quite easily but now it seems that they are getting separated from each other um, so he if I remember correctly because I read this a while ago he recorded sounds and she recorded stories or something like that um, and they decide at some point to go south from the US because he wants to study the Appalachians and she wants to know more about the, the children that were um, sort of abandoned in the border when, um, this, um, when Trump decided that they were going to be separated from their families when they arrived to the US because they were not legal immigrants. Um, so it, it touches on that part of of history or I don't know if it's history or like that social issue of children being left alone in random facilities without knowing where their parents were um, and then he goes to the Appalachians but we mostly follow her uh, on the story of these children and but also a lot is about her relationship with this man and with the children and a, a big part of it is also told from the children's perspective um, and yeah basically we we get to an insight into this relationship um, with the background of the social issues uh, and I found it um, I think the social issues were important and were interesting to read about but I think the fact that we're not the main point and we spend way too much time in these relationships I just didn't really care that much uh, and also the the voice of the narrator was not the best like especially when it was from the child's perspective it just felt like it was not very real so yeah this one was a little bit of um okay book for me i know a lot of people love it but for me it was just okay um the next one i want to talk about is a paragon by colin mccann and this was in last year's booker prize uh, long list and i read it then so i have a review up for it i'll link it down below and in the cards i think um and this one is another one that is like good idea Good, um, good discussion. The way it's written is not for me. Um, so this one follows two men, a Palestinian and an Israeli, that they both had their daughters killed in certain attacks from the other side. And it's trying to talk about 
how the feelings are the same and how at the end of the day they are the same um, and these are real people and these two men know each other and have been advocating for a solution to the conflict um, and that is particularly <laughs> I'm particularly on point right now with all the attacks and everything that is going on in Palestine. But yeah, basically that's the premise of the book. What I didn't like about it, apart from there are certain points in which it feels like he's equating the two things, like they are in the same situation. But um, yeah, sometimes he recognizes that, I mean, the average Israeli life is better than the average um, the average Palestinian life. But yeah, the thing I did not like about it is that it's, it goes into tangents, so many tangents. And it tries to be super poetic and super highbrow and whatever. And it's just like... It talks about random things that have nothing to do with anything. There is nothing on the story, nothing. Um, there are parts when it talks to the actual things that the book is supposed to be about, that those are really powerful and really beautiful. But the whole other added things of, I don't know, there was a story of this guy walking in a, in a, in a rope in the middle of the sky between Israel and Palestine, there was something about how bombs are made and the chemicals inside them and how the, these chemicals were discovered in, in Europe most of the time and things like that that had absolutely nothing to do with it and it's full of these things and it's just all over the place. This book is all over the place and I don't think it's as good as people think it is. I don't know. I have heard a lot of people love it but I just don't understand how they can love it because it's just it's just so scattered. I don't I don't understand. Um, the next one I wanted to talk is on Earth were beautifully gorgeous by uh, Ocean Wong, and this one is um, this one I actually quite like. It's um, a epistolary novel of this boy or this man writing letters to his mother who is Vietnamese and he's gay and he, she didn't approve of that so um, it's a little bit of all this trauma coming back um, coming back from him to his mother uh, in letters that he knows she will never read and it's very very poetic, it's very very beautiful I just think I don't gel as well with poetic language but I completely understand why people love this and I would be very happy if this won the Dublin Award um, I think it was beautiful. Um, I think it's a very emotional book, which again, it's not my type of book, but I understand that it's a many people's type of book and I understand why. Um, and I, I think it's it's very, very beautiful and it's worth reading. The next book in the list is The, the Nickel Boys by Colson Whitehead. And this is about a young black boy, I think it's in the 80s or 90s or something like that. And he he has like a perfect record, um, he's going to college, he's very excited about it, he never did anything illegal and then one day he's caught driving a little bit faster than he's supposed to so the police sends him to this academy, the Nickel Academy which is like um, a place for troubled young men which mostly are black and they are treated horribly there and yeah, it basically shows the, rise, the racism of the place and the racism of the time and this is based on a real place. Um, so this was, um, this was supposed to be really impactful and I think for many people it was. Um, but there's something in Colton Whitehead's writing that I don't get the emotional punch so much. I don't, I don't know why. I don't know what's about his characters that don't connect with me in, in in a way. I think it's a little bit too obvious what he's doing, maybe. I don't know. Uh, but I, yeah, I found it interesting to read, but I don't think I was connecting with it as much as I was supposed to, as as much as many other people did. Um, so yeah, I I have mixed feelings about this. I, I understand why people love it, I understand why it is winning a lot of awards, but personally my experience with the book is not particularly impactful.
The next book in the list is Girl, Woman, Another by Bernadine Navaristo and this won um, joined with Margaret Atwood the Booker Prize a couple of years ago and it has been everywhere since and it's basically interconnected short stories of mostly black women, mostly British um, and yeah basically what the experience is like and again I have a mixed reaction to Bernadina Baristo because I think the things she touches upon are really interesting. I also enjoyed the writing style which is something that not everybody deals with because it's kind of it doesn't have punctuation and it's very rhythmical it's like almost poetry in that sense like the rhythm of poetry but it doesn't it's not like it doesn't have rhyme or anything it's just very yeah very rhythmical in the way that it's written it's like flows which I really enjoy but I have a problem with Bernadine Baristo's characters because she likes to often write very unlikable, very um, annoying characters and I just don't like to read about that. I mean, I'm just, when I'm reading about a very annoying character and I completely don't understand and I know that these people exist because I have known some of them and it's okay that they are in books, I just don't want to read about them. So yeah, I have a mixed reaction to this. I th I thought it was um, I thought it was okay. I didn't particularly enjoy my experience reading it because of or some of the characters because of that. Um, but yeah, I think that some of the characters were very well developed. Some of them were just cookie cutter kind of characters that did not have the depth. It was just like a stereotype made a character. So yeah, the, this one was a bit of a mixed bag for me um, and again, it's some, something that a lot of people love and I, I think it will be fine if it wins. I also don't want this one to win, not just because personally I found it mixed but also because it has already gone so much buzz and so much attention and so much price. Uh, but I just think that it would be nice if some other book took some of that. Um, so yeah, this one I I kind of I, I would not be mad if it, if it wins, but I would prefer something else to win against. Um, and then the last book in the list is Hurricane Season by Fernanda Melchor. And I read this last year because it was in the International Booker Prize. And this one is about um a town in Mexico and there is this woman that is called the witch and from the beginning, from the first line, we know that the witch is dead and we kind of unravel how that happened and like the... how that happened based on the dynamics of the town and I think that um, this book goes back a lot into a lot of the Mexican literature I have read before, like the violence that it has, it's very violent and also like the the storytelling of it it reminds me of things like Roberto Bolaño and um, Juan Rulfo and things like that so I think it's it is very interesting that it taps back into that Mexican tradition of storytelling and it does make quite a lot of uh, social commentary on the treatment of women in Mexico um, because this witch, is, it was actually not a real witch, obviously, it was just like the herb woman of the town and it goes back into how women are treated in the, in the town and how prejudices play around things um, and I thought it was very interesting to read. It was, it's written in a very um, stream of consciousness way, that kind of pages and pages of the same sentence kind of thing, um, which sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. Um, I think that in this one it works quite well and again a lot of people like this, a lot of people don't like it, some people think it's too much violence and I can see why. I also didn't particularly enjoy the reading experience, although I appreciate what it was trying to do. Um, so again, I would not be mad if this wins, um, but I... yeah... 
I, I, I admire the book more than I enjoyed it, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, those are my thoughts on all the books in the shortlist for the Dublin Literary Award. Um, in short, unless Lost Children Archive wins or A Paragon wins, I'm fine with anything. Um, so yeah, whatever happens, happens. I think maybe I would prefer On Earth or Briefly Gorgeous to win or Hurricane Season just because I think that the other two have already gotten they all have already gotten a lot of prize um regard and and I think that on Earth were briefly briefly gorgeous and Hurricane Season have not get gotten the same attention so I would like those highlighted more but any of those four books is fine by me if they won. So we will see what happens. Um, let me know in the comments if you have a favorite from these six. Um, if you disagree with any of the opinions I said or if you agree with any of them. And until next video, bye!